Morning. Which he... news story are we on at the moment? <laughs> 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 we'll come, we'll we'll come to a bit more skew in a minute, but uh, but yesterday was all about you and and Shishkin. My God, he was he was good. I watched it again last night. I thought, is that is that actually the best he's ever been? What do you think? Uh, well, he he did feel fantastic yesterday. I mean, it was more reminiscent of his times as a novice going into the Arkle, um, where you know he just seemed to travel and jump, and he was very slick over his fences. Uh, the step up and trip certainly helped, and the wind off as well. So it was a culmination of factors. Uh, the, the the trip has been talked and talked and talked of, and it, but Tom was just saying it, he just looked a completely different animal the way he was going forward and and taking the bridle. Do you do you think almost with a horse as classy as him, tri, tri, trip's not irrelevant, but it's it's a bit academic. He could win over over any distance against most horses, couldn't he? If he's in, if he's on song. Uh, definitely. I, I, I think, you know, he's been winning at two miles because he's a very classy animal. Um, and I think, you know, if he comes through what I think we'll, we'll be going to the Ryanair at Cheltenham, if he comes mm-hmm. through that, then um, that opens up a few options, I think. It was, it, it was, I was listening to you on, on ITV yesterday and you were saying that, you know, you could kind of tell when he went to the second fence that he properly locked onto the bridle. I think you were working yesterday for ITV, Tom. Was it uh, Luke Harvey said that he'd been watching him going down to the start and he, he you know, properly took a nice, nice yeah, hold down to the like start? it looked like he ran away with Nico. Luke said that he was, he was, he was pretty keen. I said, I said that's I, just the way he rides. I didn't go very far. I only showed him the second fence down the hill. <laughs> I, don't what, I don't know what they were watching. <laughs> but I guess, I guess the point they were trying to make was maybe that, to be fair, it was a decent bit of analysis, wasn't it? it? Like, yeah. he's, like, I think this horse is up for it today. Could you even feel when you got him in the paddock and went down to the start that he was in a better place? Uh, no, I, no? I, think that's, I think that's rubbish, really. So they were, so they, so they were having a good, they were having a good guess, but were made to look damn clever. Uh, I think, yeah, I think they're just a good guess and trying to look clever. I think uh, it was more, it was more. As soon as he jumped off and went over the first, then I thought, oh, here we go, we're we're back in business. Um, because it's not until the tapes go back when you're in amongst horses, and then you know if they're up for it, if they're up feeling great and, and up for a battle. Um, Nicky Anderson's got a canny knack of this. I mean, we, we, we went through the whole Sprinter Sacra story uh, and, and it was one of the great stories. And he sort of compared this a little bit to that, to that yesterday. Perhaps it's not quite such a dr- dramatic comeback. After all, he's only had one blip and one kind of OK run in, in between times. But it's clearly been a titanic effort to get him back to his best. How on earth does he do it? Uh, I think a lot of patience and um, very good connections in, in Shishkin's owners. You know, you, you have to have owners who understand the game and know that these things take time um, we are all incredibly disappointed after the champion chase last year and we couldn't put our fingers on it and it took a lot of um, you know investigation to find out what had gone on and and then you get a run like the Tingle Creek which again you know was a bit deflating um, and then it's just a case of, of letting things come to light in their own due course and and uh, taking a bit of time and, and getting it back to where we knew that he was in a good place to go and run as well as he could in a grade one. But as I said before, we didn't know what we were going to expect going into the Saturday. And it was just um, fantastic that he came out now looking like he'd have a favourite chance in, at Cheltenham. I, I know he'd, he'd had a, uh, a breathing operation. Was that, was that because there was an issue or was it more in hope than expectation? Uh, that, there was a definite issue. I worked him up on our grass, which over 10 furlongs, you can really sort of find out sometimes yeah. what the problems are. Um, and he did flip his uh, palate. And so he just went in and got, uh, got cauterized, which doesn't take too long. And it's a fairly simple procedure. Although I don't know myself how they do it, but these vets are very, very good. Um, and then we, we stuck a tongue tie on him and he seemed to sort of thrive off that. And then it was just all systems go. It's interesting, that, isn't it? I mean, is that something that could have been bothering him in his races without you realising it, or do you have definitely known? Uh, potentially. I mean, sometimes these, these wind problems, they, you can hear them, and sometimes it's a silent wind problem. You don't know. And uh, I hadn't heard anything in the Tingle Creek. I'm, a lot of these horses at the moment running around, they've all got uh, breathing issues at some point. Um, it's just a mark of where the breed has gone. Um, and the, the Sire Sholokov is... is is quite renowned for it as well. So um, 
it's just a case of, of finding out and we're all fairly well tuned into hearing what the problems are now. Interesting. And just looking at the kind of assembly of horses now going into going into the festival, quietly, um, Nicky Henderson's got, what, five, six favourites, something like that for, for some of the bigger races. What's the atmosphere like around Seven Barrows at the moment? It's fantastic, really. I mean, at the start of the season, I think we were sort of scratching our heads, really, as to what would, you know, go to the festival with a really live chance. Um, and and now, you know, he's, he's got a, a, a good few um, shots to fire at it. And uh, I, I think uh, this is always a fantastic time of year to be around the Seven Barrows Yard um, because it's a real sort of everyone's gearing up and uh, the screws are beginning to tighten. And, um, yeah, it's very noticeable. And you're, you're a bit different in some ways because you, you enjoy the amount of time you spend there and schooling and putting the, putting the feedback in, a bit like you were saying with, with Shishkin. And not, not every jockey would be, would be doing that. No, I mean, I, I've been at Seven Barrows since I was 19. Um, I'm now 33 and I've, I've, put, and I've put an awful lot of time and it's almost like my second home, really. And uh, I love spending time there and um, trying to work things out and get these horses to, to reach their potential and uh, try and help out as much as I can and um, be, a, be a positive influence as much as I can. Today's all about the, the ties that bind, I suppose, looking at the people on my, on my right. Uh, I, I enjoyed your, your little clip earlier on in the, in the plot. Have you done the plunge pool this morning? No, I have not. <laughs> I mean, it, you make out as though you're enjoying it. It looks, it looks horrible to me. It, it was uh, advocated by Connor Schumacher, the sort of the go-to PT in the Cotswold. And, um, yeah, so a few of us have been jumping in and out. And uh, it's OK after 30 seconds, but um, those first 30 seconds aren't very nice. But um, <laughs> no. There's often days if he doesn't fancy it, he gets his butler to do it instead. LAUGHTER uh, I'm sure you just like to to uh, to put a button on the uh, on the Tom Skew loving Nico. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't get to pay tribute to him yesterday, um, but all I can say it was an absolute pleasure to work with the guy for as long as I was riding. Um, he acts like he's 25, not 40, going on 41. Um, but uh, no, he was, he was firm but fair on the race course, but a great deal of fun. Um, in our corner and he'll be sorely missed particularly around Cheltenham and uh, I don't know who's going to fill his place No, we're all trying to guess as well Nico, <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> Thank you, thanks Nick Subscribe to Racing TV's YouTube channel now to watch more great races like this